And I would just think that coming into this new group of, of individuals that are saying, hey, you know, this is ground. We're all kind of walking through this blind right now. Wouldn't you do anything in your power to make them feel comfortable? I don't know. Like, if you really want to be one of the girls, wouldn't you do what you need to do to make them feel okay? So if you know that you're you're bringing discomfort to the situation, why wouldn't you just say, guys, I get it 100%. Because I'm going to go change. And, and I'm, I'm not trying to place blame because I don't know what those no, conversations are. No, but, I mean, that's where a lot of people are coming from, you know, is the entitlement of – this it doesn't matter what the how everybody else feels. It doesn't matter. But you realize that there's a lot of a lot of trans individuals that don't come from a place of entitlement. Like there are trans individuals no, I understand that are upset that. about conversations like this. I, I understand that completely. I understand. Listen, everybody is their own person. But the point is, do you want to you know, walk into a lady's bathroom, sit down on a toilet, look at the stall next door and see feet pointing in that direction and someone peeing. Do you I, know, is that what you want to see in a lady's bathroom? We had this conversation, though. And, but, you know, and I think most of them probably sit down and push their pee-pee in the toilet if they still have one. But on the flip side of that, what about a trans man? Have you what seen those it? pictures? I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily want, want that either. That's what I'm saying. When you're watching somebody walk in tatted up with a full beard and some big, you know, quarter gauges in their ears, and you're swearing that that is a man walking in behind your eight or your ten year old daughter, or even as a female, I might I'm going to be way more intimidated by that than seeing some feet pointing in the wrong direction. So long as there's not a head underneath the stall, you know, peeking at me, we're good. Feeling like a whole man is walking into a bathroom behind me. <laughs> That's a different situation. In 2023, in many places, that's exactly what, again, women are faced with because there's laws on the books that state, you know, that you cannot use the bathroom that you identify with. You have to use, you know, the bathroom of the sex you were assigned at birth. Um, I'm a big fan of, of, of what is that, um, gender. Yeah, but are, are women who transition to men as... Um as scary to women as men who transition to women. Do you know what I mean? A if man you... transitioning to a why is, would that that's not scary to me. In a bathroom situation. No, uh, because she looks like a woman. She looks like a woman. She's in there peeing because she hasn't had her pee pee cut off. That's a different I mean, that doesn't scare me so long as she's not pushing me into a corner. Somebody that looks like a man following me into a bathroom, if I'm at a if I'm at a a, a rest stop. And I walk into a rest stop in Florida where you have to use the bathroom you were assigned at birth. And I'm at one of these places on the turnpike and a trans man walks into the bathroom behind me. I'm probably going to be way more freaked out than than some of let the me, let me just what you're alluding to is people using transgenderism as a front for being a predator. Like, that's what you're saying. Like, and that's that's a completely different conversation. I don't think okay. Leah Thomas is walking into a locker room with the intention of wanting to bang down her f her teammates. That's yeah, not at know. all what I think was going I on. I feel there. you, but I'm just saying in general. Yeah, but that's part of, but that again is part the, of that fear-mongering narrative. Sticking to what this young lady said, why I feel for her is because there's just a penis. Some girls don't want to see random penises. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like the only some of these some of these girls might have been virgins. It's not about being fearful that their teammate is going How about their to assault them. School told them, "Hey, yeah, but it's suck their, it up, it's, Buttercup." It's not their entire school. It's the administration because I'm sure there's plenty of people that are on these young women's side. Yeah, but the so, administration yes, and the but school. But I'm talking about it from where. I, okay, that's again. supposed to protect your kids. Force them to do this. What you're alluding to is people using transgenderism as a front for being a predator. Like, that's what you're saying. Like, and that's that's a completely different conversation. I don't okay. think Leah Thomas is walking into a locker room with the intention of wanting to bang down her f her teammates. That's yeah, not at know. all what I think was going I on. I feel you, but I'm just saying in general. Yeah, but that's part of, but that again me, is part of that fear-mongering narrative. Sticking to what this young lady said, why I feel for her is because there's just a penis. Some girls don't want to see random penises. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like the only some of these some of these girls might have been virgins. It's not about being fearful that their teammate is going How about their to assault them. School told them, 
hey, yeah, but suck it up, it's, buttercup. It's not their entire school. It's the administration. Because I'm sure there's plenty of people that are on these young women's side. Yeah, but the so, administration yes. and the but school. But I'm talking about it from where. I, okay. That's again. supposed to protect your kids. Force them to do this. You're saying force. Once again, there were bathroom stalls that they could change in. They didn't They didn't actively tell Leah she needed to change in the family stall, which is something that they could have done, or they could have assigned a separate locker. Like, do you remember the movie G.I. Jane? Right? Remember mm-hmm. when Demi Moore first got onto the base? Yeah, yeah. They gave her separate barracks, right? Like, she had separate yeah. everything, and she was like, well, I'll never be one of them if I can't. I got to share, you know, yeah. same bed, same head, whatever the case, whatever the saying was. Um, I can understand the camaraderie that happens in a locker room, but if it comes to changing, I'm not happy with the school's decision, but I'm more disappointed in Leah as a teammate. If you know you're making some of your teammates uncomfortable, right, in this in this very kind of murky situation that not everybody, like, this is, again, it's this is uncharted territory for a lot of people. Why wouldn't you just quote unquote take one for the team and change in a bathroom like why you know or have the conversations with these young ladies i mean i i i would just yeah why wouldn't you why wouldn't you just quote unquote take one for the team and change in a bathroom like why you know or have the conversations with these young ladies i mean i i i, I would just yeah why wouldn't you that makes me sad. And again, I don't know what it those makes conversations. makes me feel like he might have been a little self-centered. That, yes. But I, I, I almost wonder too. And to not giving a f- about the rest of the well, people. Well, and that, again, that's what it, it it does sound that way. And and that to me is, again, to your point, coming from that kind of entitled space. No different than the fact that I feel they could have waited until they had graduated to fully transition. I'm not saying don't don't present or don't talk about it but when you're competing in sports at that level why would you wait until your last year you know what I mean and all of a sudden make this decision none of us are Leah Thomas but listening to this young woman talk about this like it's enough that we have to deal with predatory you know doctors like what the U.S. women's gymnastics team had to deal with and the students you know and the gymnasts at whatever it was the University of Michigan or wherever he you know you know what I'm talking about Acer um but now when we're having all of these open dialogues about, you know, women and setting boundaries and being comfortable and all of these things and using your voice and speaking up, what she says at the end of that, that testimony is very poignant when she's saying, you know, we were basically pushed aside for another man, you know? And yeah, that's where I think a lot of the argument comes from. That's why a lot of these women are speaking up and saying, doesn't it bother you that men are now (laughs) making decisions for women? Well, what bothers me beyond that is the fact that as somebody who considers himself an ally, like I find myself between a rock and a hard place, right? Because I feel like everybody is entitled to live as their true authentic self, Um, you know, hearing the conversations and the testimony and again, doing your own research and talking to doctors and talking to psychologists. Your true authentic self, okay? That's, I, I totally believe in that. Okay, mm-hmm. live to be your true authentic self. Okay, but but if you choose to be your true authentic self and it forces you to stand out in a crowd, you have to accept that. You have to accept that. You know, people who have face tattoos get looked at kind of weird but when they, they chose walk into that, place. Uh, and what? And they didn't choose to transition? They chose to live as their they, – they didn't choose to be born in the wrong body or look as the Dennis. wrong sex. Look at De- he, he loves every bit of that, though. Yes. That's a walking choice that Dennis makes every single day. But if Dennis was trans, he might tell you, I didn't choose to be born as a seven-foot-tall basketball-playing man. Like, I would have preferred to have been a four-foot-11 Carmen Electra. Everybody's dealt – a hand in life and and you play it they are but you can't compare face tattoos which somebody goes out and knowingly just plucks on their face to being born a way that feels different than how you feel inside right like again if we're not if you haven't experienced it you cannot speak to it nope but there are ways to minimize some of 
of that standing out in the crowd that you're talking about, right? And part of that is the treatment that we allow younger people to get earlier in life, right? Especially when you're talking about transgender women. 